Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take another look at the scaling of your objects and making sure that they are scaled properly relative to each other. And this isn't strictly just for the sake of looking like they're the correct size in your scene, but also because it's going to play a part for future lessons with rigid body dynamics and things like that because you can set the mass of your objects accordingly, which is just as important. So let's just take a look. This is the object from the previous lesson on leaders and this is the default cube. What you see from this view, this looks like a huge cube, but if you go into the scene, this is just the standard cube when you add it to the scene. And you can see it in here that it has a dimension of 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. I'm using the metric system over here like this. All right. And so now let's go zoom into this small cube which was going to be in liters and I have the uh, value set up on this one. If I go into edit mode you can see it's only 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So I know this holds, assuming these are super thin walls, that the interior of this space is going to hold 1,000 cubic centimeters and so that'll hold a liter of water right in there based on that. But now if you go look at this cube over here and I go into edit mode, notice there's no dimension set on it. And that's because you have to make sure you set these per object down here. So I'll change the edge length. And you see this is indicated in meters here. And the other one was in centimeters because I entered it in centimeters like that. So that's one thing is always making sure that everything's in the right shape because maybe in this case, say I'm going to scale this in X just real quick. Maybe this will be my store shelf something like that because two meters is you know a little over six feet so that's a reasonable size for a shelf. I'm just going to wing this real quick and I'll scale this in Y like this. Of course remember um, and this just bears repeating because it's that important is I go into edit mode and you'll notice it still shows two, two meters this direction so it doesn't change it so you have to make sure when you change these scales is to press control A and apply the scale. So then when I go back into edit mode, now it's accurately showing here 79.1267 centimeters, 2 meters this way. So it's changing it for us and now you're looking at it with the proper dimensions like this. And the reason you do it is because then you know if you've built shelves at a certain height and then you have your liter box of water. In fact, if you read, I think I still have it posted on my uh, Play, in a playlist for storybook math, there's a story called The Water Store that's all about something similar like this. Because so now you have your, your uh, cube-shaped liter of water and it can accurately you know, sit on a shelf that it's a certain height. And then it'll look right relative to the scene. But not only is, like I said, the size, every, everything you're, you're seeing, if you're going to be a technical animator, you want everything to be precise in your scene from the beginning. So you really need to plan it out. You don't want to just come in and go, I'm going to add a cube to the scene, right? And I'll just, I'll move it up here and I'll scale it in X and I'll scale it in Y like this without giving any thought to the size because then maybe at another time you're building something else and it's scaled too big relative to yourself and then nothing fits. So planning in advance is just a huge, huge consideration. And I'll go into further further details as far as specifying the mass of these objects as well because everything really comes into play as far as these physics engines and it's really important to get that stuff right the density of an object and things like that so but I'll cover that in future tutorials so that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson